Welcome to the 10 day growth hacking challenge with your host Nader Sabri. Today we're here with Kareem Halal from Pro Tender, our next contender here in season two. And we've got something super, super exciting. For more information about Kareem, definitely hit him up below to learn more about what he does. He is a data rich organization that is scaling. Uh, all I can tell you is I love working with these types of companies because they have things under the hood that are absolutely amazing for everybody to learn from. Before we get started, just as a reminder, this is based on the Growth Thinking Design Methodology book. For those of you who are watching the challenge and want to do this on your own, pick up your copy and you'll be able to do some of the things that we're doing over here. Today, we're going to get to know Kareem a little bit better, his business, his growth challenge, and the, the three growth hacks we plan to execute in the next 10 days. Kareem, over to you if you can tell us a little bit more about yourself and ProTender. Sure. So nice to meet everybody. Thank you, Nader. Great to be here. Uh, ProTender is effectively a, a, a platform to help the construction industry build better uh, with less risk. So the way it started off was about seven years ago, we realized when I was working with, with my family office uh, that the construction was very much still done the old ways. It hadn't evolved in a long time. And it was still very much paper and pen based. And there was not a lot of information on what's happening, who's working with who. So it was very hard to find the right people to work with for the right project, for the right price. Um, especially when you're building or you're outside of your core market, which might be a city or a state or, or a country. And so from that a particular idea, I started off uh, Protenders initially as a online bidding platform for construction to really connect all of the developers, contractors, consultants to one and help them do the whole bidding process in a very efficient way. But then we added the whole data layer to it, which is really more of a LinkedIn for construction, which helps companies get found, uh, source leads. And then the flip side of that is also go and see what's happening in the market. And then from there, understand who to work with. So it's a full top to bottom uh, platform for the industry for developers, down to suppliers, and global in nature. We already have customers or members um, from 105 countries. We've uh, processed around $45 billion worth of projects in the platform, and we track about 70,000 projects around the region. So that's what we do. Uh, we've, uh, we, we've gone through, of course, all the regular ups and downs of uh, being an entrepreneur in the UE. Um, our biggest growth challenge has been effectively with um, going combining an enterprise solution, which is tendering, to a much more high volume, you know, lower touch points um, side of the business, which is more of the profiles, and trying to find a single way to send the messaging across and to really explain the value proposition to all people, uh, different people in the industry. Um, couple that with the fact you're being bootstrapped because cash fund cash uh, funding for Construction tech startups in the Middle East isn't the easiest thing to get. Um, so that's kind of where we are, where we're growth, where we're hacking, we're trying to find ways to, to, to accelerate the growth in preparation for a, for a big uh, series around happening in the next couple of months. Perfect. Perfect. I think you had a really good analogy, if you don't mind sharing, where you're talking about how what you do is like the LinkedIn of construction compared to something else, which I couldn't remember because, but it sat sure. very well with me. Yeah. Sure. So effectively, what there is today in the industry, there's a bunch of different platforms that give you access to a database, which is typically the yellow page. So they give you access to a bunch of projects where you can go and see what's happening. That's about it. There's nothing else you can do with it. The, the benefit of pretenders is that you're able to do within a single platform to do everything from going in, getting building your profile, keeping it updated, using that to, to have people find you. So what we have is typically people find you eight to ten, eight to ten times more via the references or via products compared to who you are. Nobody knows you unless they know you, right? But once they know you, you say the business. With us, they can find you based on what you've done, who you work with, what you sell, who you sell, who you sold it to. And so we're effectively more of a LinkedIn, which is really more of a one-stop shop platform compared to a yellow page, which is you go and try and find the right companies. Yeah. So this is what, what puts us apart. You're everything from again, getting found, seeing what's in the market, and the end goal being, a full, of course, you want to sell or you want to bid. So that's the, the reason why we have it all in one single platform. Fantastic. And cracking it down to your growth problems, how would we, how, how are we going to kind of um, illustrate your, just your general growth problem what, and what we're going to pursue in this challenge and then the three growth hacks that we're going to go after? So the, 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 again, the, the main problem that we've been having is is with the explaining, explaining the so have, pushing on the on the formal for customers, right? You as a platform, as a, as a LinkedIn, you want to basically make it make make companies understand 
that they can they cannot not be on the platform, right? So how do you push them to understand the value proposition in a way that that is really a no brainer, which is effectively what it is, right? Yeah. So first of all is how do you build up because you can you have three parts of the business. You have one which is very much of a sales enterprise, which is a you know long term, long sell cycles, very high volume, very high ticket size tendering. But then you have a lot more of these small, smaller sizes, which are a hundred bucks a month, which you pay online. There's no, there's no sales involved. So explaining both situations is quite hard to do manually, which is why we want to push more on the profile side of thing, which is the entry point for the platform, which will help us build up our database of companies and thus allow us to actually convert those to paying customers afterwards with intelligence or bidding or tendering or whatever else. So the main problems that we're trying to solve today is how can we um, really explode or increase the number of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, companies signing up with literally no involvement from our sales team. We want them yeah. to understand the value proposition. We want them to understand what the proposed value for them, how to do it, and really give us an uh, entry point for generating more leads afterwards into the uh, in other things that we sell. So essentially, okay, so, so the, the big benefit is the lead generation, obviously, to the clients. But the, the, the challenge for you as a growth perspective is one is awareness of the depth. Well, first is awareness. Second is awareness of the depth of the, the, the richness of the data you have, and then converting them into uh, developing profiles, which is the entry point, right? It's the low friction entry point into your platform, correct? Well, the way the platform works is a bit of a, it's a bit of a cycle, right? The more customers we have, the more data we get, the more data we get, the more it becomes easier for us to sell data, the more data we have, again, the more you can mix things with it, you can make, you know, intelligence, you can provide indexes. So it's getting access to data is actually quite, uh, is, is actually quite important. Um, and so right now we've been doing it in a very manual, very, very, you know, very uh, research kind of way, but we want to make that more as being a, a crowdsourced. Um, and so the profiles are a great way for that because the way the profiles work, the more that they give us, the more you rank up higher in the results, which means you get more leads, you get more, you get more, more, more traffic. The more you update your profiles, the more, again, something happens. So there's an interest in you giving us more information. And we show you specifically how every part of the information you give us generates more leads for you. Absolutely. Right. So the moment you see that, this is your aha moment. The moment you see how much giving us data increases your visibility, thus your number of leads, uh, helps us drastically for one, a lead generation, because that becomes people we can then upsell for the services. But then it also makes our data collection process easier because it means you have more data to actually go and resell afterwards. Yeah. Um, and of course, we verify everything, but still it needs to be, there needs to be an input into it. Yeah. So basically, yeah. So the volume of data uh, and the richness of that data plays a really large part in greasing the wheel between, um, you know, exactly. between supplier and buyer, and and making it work. And you know, I I remember you shared a story with me about how good your intelligence was, which shocked some people in your industry. Uh, just as an example, of course, not going into any details, but that to me is a very clear indicator of a very good platform that's able not just to grab data but to enrich that data. And that data enrichment process, which I saw is where the real money is in, in this, but educating people about that is challenging. Not everybody understands, uh, you know, people know data is important, but how important it is, is probably the educational part, which where the challenge is. And uh, I've seen, I've seen, as I mentioned to you in, in, in our last call, I've seen somehow data businesses uh, in the intelligence area, especially on the economics and investment side, uh, start real small, they, they just balloon and then get bought out because they're, input ability in the sense of the richness of data for the industry is so massive. Uh, and the indirect application of that data is actually more valuable than the direct application of that data. And that's going to be kind of the future where this will go, of course, in the long term. Uh, but that's fantastic. So, so what are the three growth hacks that you're going to, that, you, that you're looking to put into place to, to get past this? Well, one is again, increasing the, or making the value position easier for customers to understand that they cannot not be on the profile. They cannot not be the partner's platform. So again, the yep. formal part of it. Uh, two is trying to find ways to accelerate the, the data collection through partnership with governments potentially. Yep. Um, and the third one is more on the lines of um, trying to figure out how can we collect more data through automated ways. So what are the yeah. processes for us to be able to understand uh, or what, so again, we, we, if you would be in the States or in Europe or in other parts of the world, would you already have open APIs, that would be quite simple, but how can we, where, where we are, 
where can we access data? How can we siphon it? How can we collect it? How can we process it to make the process as little yeah. as possible? So the idea is that you and other, the moment you sign up to a platform, you log into your platform to, to, your, to the account, you would already have half a profile completed, right? Because we have we know so much about you and that would make your your your, your aha moment that much quicker. Because Absolutely. if you log in and you have your profiles already have built, then you're already generating leads, you already have traffic, you already have everything else. You need you to just, just activate going. it. Yeah, you need to exactly. just activate it. That's it. Exactly. Precisely. Yep. Yep. And I think mastering that growth hack right there, because as, as I've talked before with you, I mean, we've done this in other industries where we siphon enrich and then draw in the client. And then, and then once they see it, they're like, whoa, okay. And then all everything after that, like you said, the aha moment, I like that, the aha moment. And then, and then after that, it's like, it's just activating it. And then they see the value being created. And it's not an easy thing to do, but once it works like a machine, it's incredible. You'd be surprised how fast that can work. And I, I'm glad that you're going uh, down that route because I think that's going to play out really well for you. And I, I like the fact that you're tapping into also um, – intelligence services for government because what you provide i mean the okay so the construction industry is 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 big ticket deals right so this is not like your everyday joe or or a small medium-sized business that's going to be like hey we'll, we'll let's go put a hundred million dollars into a building and no that's not the case you have major players uh with very deep pockets and governments uh both government and semi-government units that are heavily involved in, especially in this region um, in this mechanic. And I think that this is going to be playing a super important role in you moving forward, although it's challenging. The other thing I want to point out to those who are tuning in, um, Kareem is doing something actually, uh, I don't think he's getting enough spotlight on. And, and the fact that he's creating data in very data, um, under, uh, yeah, very scarce data environments, uh, right? Emerging markets where where you know the top bankers and investors around the world want to enter, but don't have the data to do anything with it. They don't have, they can't make a decision. It's based on you know uh, you know conversations and introductions, but that's not enough. Uh, independent decisions need to be made by funds and and businesses to place money. And this is where Kareem's service becomes very valuable um, when organizations create enriched data in. Uh, play in, in environments where data is very scarce. And there's a good example in the region. I think you already know them. Uh, they're, they're one of the old school guys, but broke grounds, which is Zalia.com, if you recall. Uh, do, you, do you remember Zalia? Actually, we used to, we, used to we, we partnered up with them at some point. So yeah, I know them very well. There you go. So Zalia cracked, cracked open that space where there was like a, a drought in data and then they started as they just basically just put the data there and then they started to enrich it. And, and that's exactly what where you're playing the game where I think there should be a spotlight on. And these are some of the things that we need we need to emphasize, including the value of creation of business through your platform, although you may not be involved yet in direct transaction uh, or curating direct transactions within the platform yet, and you're heading to that direction, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but the creation of value using your system. So if just one or two or three suppliers get together and there's a construction project of a billion dollars, you've, you've enabled a billion dollar project through your platform. That needs to be captured because I think the number may surprise uh, you and, and, and those tuning in for sure. So, so a, couple of, uh, a couple of small things here. So one, we already do do transactions, but we do transactions at a very high level. So what we do is really facilitate the whole tendering process for developers, construction consultants. So we already know at a very high level where the volume and what the, 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 the price is and what, what's going on. What we want to go into is more of the lower level. Because typically in a project lifecycle, you're going to have one, maybe two or three tenders, but that will really specify who is going to be the main contractor. But then it goes down to the contractor buying all the equipment, sub out all, this, all the subcontractors. And this is where the massive amount of data comes in because then you can oh. trade. There's two reasons. One is it gives you much more data, much more transaction, much more volume. But two, you can start tracing every single dirham or dollar from the initial point all the way down to who sold it, how much was this bought for compared to how much it was quoted for, um, what's going to be the demand for services and, and products in the next six months, um, who, who actually worked on it, who actually installed a light from where, from which supplier, what quality, you know? So you can start doing two things. One is traceability and efficiency. So you're able to government to understand, well, specifically every dirham that's being spent, where does it go? top to bottom and two because you have more now of a of a audit trail for the whole building it increases transparency which increases you know um trust in the ecosystem which potentially brings in more foreign investors into the country right so 
construction is one of the industries which is a massive industry, but the fun fact is about 60% of our projects end up being over, you know, over budget, delayed or canceled or go to courts. And so wow. that's typically because there is literally nothing, there's little data to actually make your, uh, your process more uh, risk, or reduce your risk. It's yeah. a very risky business because you have no data. And so this is what we're trying to fix with our platform. And this only works if you bring in government and private sector. If you only okay. do public, you're missing out on the, whole, on the whole part of the ecosystem. If you only do private, you miss out on the whole, again, public side. So it yep. only works if you have one platform for the whole ecosystem that brings in everybody from the ecosystem into one platform. Yep. And this is the, the kind of the, the, the vision that we have for it. Fantastic. I love it. I think this is going to go places much beyond what you can imagine. Guys, uh, that's uh, Kareem Halal with the Pro Tender. Uh, he's going to be taking the next day 10-day challenge to create more awareness uh, to create, create more visibility, but also to enrich the data uh, using automated techniques to enhance the size of the database to get more clients and increase uh, the revenue created within the system he has. Uh, that's in high level points. To get more information about what Kareem does and who he is, tap, uh, tap below into the description. Kareem, any last words before you start the challenge? <laughs> Can't wait to start, man. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Let's see you. Let's see you in the next video on the first growth act. See you, Kareem. Excellent. Take Thanks care, everybody. man. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.